Welcome to the Family Goals Podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. My name is Joel and Howes, and the purpose of this podcast is to encourage you to grow closer to God, to strengthen your marriage, and to inspire your family to reach its highest potential. This is a surprise bonus episode from the panel from our men's conference this past week, featuring one of my favorite church members, Tom Gillette. On this panel, we hear from different perspectives from multiple generations on what actions over words means and how to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Check it out. Well, this, this, it, this fires me up that we got about 300 men in the room. And uh, you, guys, you guys know I'm on fire right now, okay? Davey's on fire. You're on fire, aren't you? On fire. We're on fire. Tom's on fire. Jolyn's on fire. And I'm a big believer in prayer. How many people in faith, like you, you brought, you pulled your trailer behind your truck tonight because you want to take the Blackstone Grill home with you? How many people pulled a trailer behind their truck? So we've got, uh, this is our podcast crew, and we've added, added Tom Gillette here. Uh, Tom is an elder in our church. He is a widower, a grandparent, yep, and uh, so he's the old guy, right? And and my daughter reminded me of that, why I got invited. She says, look at everybody else, he's the old guy, thanks. Yeah, Jolyn, y'all know Jolyn, my son, 24, single. (laughs) We're praying for a wife. I don't think that's going to help me Okay. So you want to put that out there? <laughs> Hair and outfit looking like a Backstreet Boy. Yeah. <laughs> young, young buck. He's the young buck. This is our middle-aged man. So. You got it covered. Yeah, well, we da- could, I thought you could have covered the old man, too. Yeah, I knew you would right. say that. I knew you were going to say that. So I guess we could celebrate Georgia winning the national championship. <laughs> so, yeah. Any, any thoughts on that before we get into this, like Georgia win the national championship? Uh, we own Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're not watching football, basketball, like we're going to live in the moment here in the now, and it's great to be a yeah. Georgia Bulldog. It's pretty yeah. great. Atlanta Braves. He's, did somebody say Roll Tide? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, There's, no. Hey, the only time we say that is when we flush the toilet. Roll turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so I, I, got, I got a picture sent to me a while ago that I, I had to share with you guys. You guys have heard me talk about Steve, the neighbor, my next door neighbor. Well, check out this picture he just sent me. Yeah. Some things you can't unsee. So uh, I'm gonna owe him about $1,000 for showing that. All right, let, let's... Uh, I say we dive on in. We don't, we don't have too much time, huh? Get him. Let's, let's get after it. So uh, the, the title of the series, or the title of this conference is Action Over Words. So what, is, what does that mean to you guys? Too often as men, I think we have a tendency to talk a good talk and then not follow it up with the good walk. So this is really about encouraging and inspiring you and inspiring us up here to be brave, to get outside our comfort zone sometimes and, and be full of action, not just words. Don't just talk about the importance of our faith, but show it to other people in our deeds. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah. it's just living out um, what we preach and just actually walking the walk, picking up our cross um, daily. Yeah, I think, um, I think we all have a tendency, like you said, to, to talk it. Um, I know I do in my life. I, I, I want to tell other people daily, like, and help other people daily, like, hey, do this, read this, do this, and then have a tendency not to do it myself. So I think, um, you know, I, I, I'm struggling with stuff like that. I'll, I'll share things with people all the time, and I'm like, you know what? How about you live it first? How about you live it, like, reading books and sharing books? Like, I, I'm the first guy that I'll share books with my friends, and I'll read two chapters, and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Share it with all my buddies, and I never finished the book. So I'm reading a book right now, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not texting a single buddy until I finish this stupid book, so I have to actually be about it and finish it. So I think it's easy, it's easy to talk about. It's easy to talk about. A lot of times, you know, finishing it, doing it, um, living it all the time is something that's a challenge for all of us, and, and 
How do we do that? A lot of times it's people in our lives that when they actually do hold you a little bit accountable, you listen and you don't get defensive and um, you can learn from your friends and, and your buddies in that area too. Yeah, one of the things that we talk about a lot on the podcast, because it, it's a lot about parenting, is more is caught than taught. And I think to me with the actions over words, uh, you know, we, we, could, we could tell our kids things all the time, but they're gonna, they're gonna what, what does that mean to you, more is caught than taught? I think we can teach our kids everything we want to say, and we can tell them to do X, we can tell them to do Y, we can tell them to do Z, but they're emulating us regardless. So if you tell them about it until they're blue in their face and you don't live it, it's, it's not going to impact them. It's not going to, it's not going to make a difference. They're going to emulate the things that you do the best or the things that you do the worst, unfortunately, because um, I hear my son sometimes make a smart out comment to, to my daughter, and I'm like... <laughs> Yep, no, that one came from, came straight from me. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're, they're always listening. And I think you see as they get older, mine are in middle school now. Now you're like, oh gosh, like every single thing um, you say, which is, but, but it's a great thing too. I yeah. mean, if you're living the right way and you're teaching them the right things, that doesn't mean we're supposed to be perfect, by the way. Like, I also think there's a lot of value in telling your kids that you're struggling. Like, I'm struggling with X. I'm struggling with Y. I was texting with one of my best friends today and he's trying to lose weight, trying to lose weight, trying to lose weight. I'm like, you know, tell your, tell your kids how hard this is for you. Like tell them how big of a struggle it is for you. And you got to put in a lot of time and a lot of work and you got to think about it and have them be your accountability partners. Tell them to help you out and be your accountability partner and bring them, you know, in on it. I think there's also, you know, a ton of value in that as well. Mm -hmm. Tom, one of the things I talk to the elders a lot about is, is the whole idea of living a life above reproach. And in discipleship, we talk about having, having a life worth emulating, like living a life that you would want somebody else to, to emulate. What, what are your thoughts on that? I love the word, the word emulate. As, as Jonathan said, so I'll say it, I lost my wife about a year and a half ago. And, and you think about the great memories that you have. When we leave this earth to go to paradise with our Lord, we hope we leave some, some, some great memories. But what's more important, I think, is that we, we leave and people want to emulate our actions. Not just talk about who we were and what we did, but they want to become, they want to become us. Um, I, you know, so many times my wife, when we're, when we're stuck with a hard decision, I'll ask myself, what would Pam do? She, this is a tough decision, what would she do? Uh, recently a friend of mine called me and he was, he was on top of the world, his son, his, his adult son called him and says, I'm having a difficult time. I've got an ethical decision that I need to make, and I don't know what to do. So my friend said his son called him and says, you're the most ethical man that I've ever seen, and I want to I wanna know what to do. And he felt so good. He felt so, so warm. Just think about your children saying that you're the most ethical man that, that they know. That's the life that I think each one of us want to live. That's what we want to mm. emulate. That's powerful. Joe, any thoughts? Yeah, I remember when I was like three or four, you got LASIK eye surgery. And he got LASIK eye surgery. He had to wear goggles, like when he played sports, whatever he did. It's like I went to the closet and I found like my swimming goggles and I wore them <laughs> everywhere, all the time, every day. Like wore them to church, everything. Because I, I wanted to be just like him. And kind of like David was saying, it's like whether you think they're listening or not, whether, whether you think they're watching or not, like they're always watching. I want, to, I want to talk about this with guys. Um, of course, I love seeing all these guys. I love seeing you guys talking around the tables together, the, the friendships that you have, and hopefully you're make, making new friends. And uh, I, want to, I want to ask you first, Davey, um, why, why is it important to choose your friends wisely? Why, why is it important to surround yourself around the right group of people? Man, it's, it's, it's one of the most important things you'll do in your life. And I can tell you I've been married for almost 17 years. My wife is my, uh, my high school sweetheart, the only girlfriend I've ever had, the best person I've ever known, and best person I've ever spent time with here. And um, I was about that close about eight years ago to losing my wife, to losing my family because we had chosen to hang out with the wrong people. We had chosen to 
do life with people that played sports, that um, social activities was the most important part. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't church. It wasn't us. Like, it was literally about the day and having fun and enjoying every moment. And, um, you know, literally, it, it, it was a huge strain on us. And um, it, it was pa the parenting aspect of it. Like, man, who, who you allow your kids to, um, to be surrounded by. Like, they're, they're influencing them every step of the way. And we had to make a big, huge decision. And it was a hard, hard decision to shift gears and to find people in our lives that root for our marriage, that root for, you know, to, for us to succeed. Not, listen, if you're around people, like, this shouldn't be a news flash, but if you're around people that, um, that don't really care about their own lives, do you really think they care about yours? They don't care about their marriage? Do you think they care about yours? Um, if their marriage isn't important, I promise you, your marriage isn't important. Uh, so I think when we made a decision and, um, and left and decided to only surround ourselves with people that are gonna be positive, only surround ourselves with people that are gonna behave and talk in a way in front of our kids that, um, that we know you should behave and talk, it was, it was life changing. It was marriage saving. It was my son and daughter having a mom and dad changing. I mean, that's, that's how big of a deal um, it was for us. So in every walk of, of your life, you have to, you know, you know your, your parents always said, you know, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You know, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you don't believe that, just do a little survey with yourself. Like, when you hang out with somebody long enough, what is that movie, right? We finish each other's sentences, right? Like, you can literally start to think like someone else. Negativity. You want to become negative, hang out with negative people. But you want to be positive, and you want to be light, and you want to, uh, you know, lead your kids down the right path and be a great example, and the people around them that are a great example, surround yourself with great people. Surround yourself with people that are chasing God. Like, dude, it changed our whole world. It, changes, it changed our kids' Um, world, but you, you guys have that opportunity and that choice every day. And it's not always easy to drift away from certain people, but I remember talking to you about through this, through this time with us, and he talked about it, and this made a lot of sense to me. He talked about when you, when you go in the ocean and you swim and you're just hanging out, just hanging out. Next thing you know, the girls are, the girls are by the umbrella, right? Like the guys are out there in the water. Next thing you know, what happens? You're a you're hundred yards down, right? It's a slow drift. It's a slow drift, and that's, that's what happened to us. And I would encourage all y'all, man, it's, it's, the, it's one of the most important things you'll do in your life to surround yourself with people that are in your life that want to see you succeed, that want to see your marriage succeed, that will tell you things for you personally that it, not to puff your chest up or to make you feel a certain kind of way because they care about you. Let's give David a hand for that. I appreciate you sharing. That was, that was powerful. And, and, some, and some of the guys that you surround yourself with in the room tonight, and I know they mean a lot to you okay. and your family. Joe and Tom, you have any thoughts on that? I, I agree with everything David said. It was really great words. I, 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 I've always called it the room. I, I know myself, I'm not strong enough to go into a bad room I'm not strong enough of charisma and character to change the room. Ultimately, what's gonna happen is the room is gonna change me. And if I can't change the room, I have to make a, in a decision to change rooms. I need to be around those positive people. What, what do the kids call today, the influencers? Well, people influence our lives, and I need, I need to be around people that will influence me in a positive way to make me want to encourage them to be a better man, a better woman, a better person, a better, better whatever it is. I need to, I can decide and you can decide what room you go in, what room you stay in. And if you're in a, the wrong room with the wrong people, it is your choice to, to leave the room, to go somewhere else. Don't let them change you. And I think that's consistent with what David mm -hmm. was saying. Yeah. I think for me, um, it just comes down to friends with the same convictions, the same beliefs. 
Because if I'm with a group of friends that say they don't go to church, they're not Christians, they might have different convictions on drinking or stuff like that. So if I get invited to a party or to their house, it's like, oh, I know what they're gonna be doing. So if I go to this place, I'm gonna be put in these types of situations. But when you talk about foxhole friends, friends that have the same convictions, it's like, they're gonna be people keeping me accountable for what I struggle with. And they're gonna um, sharpen me, iron sharpens iron. And those foxhole friends, those are the friends I can go to with anything. Um, that's, that is so important. And those friends should respect every decision. Like a real friend's gonna respect your decisions. Real friends, no matter, and listen, most of us in this room are past high school age where we deal with some of the bull crap, you know, that you deal with in high school. But like, I mean, friends are always going to respect your, if, if, you, if, you, if you stand for something like that, man, your friends are gonna rally around you most of the time. They'll be like, nah, you take pride in this. Like if they know something's important to you, I mean, they're gonna take pride in you being that guy. Like, nah, he doesn't drink. Like I, I would never forget my friends in college, man. Like when I first got there, literally it was always, hey, you want a beer? You want a beer? When you go downtown, you want a beer? And, and, I, and I always told them no, because I don't drink. And then uh, literally come my sophomore year, my junior year, bro, my friends were like, no, 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 go away, he don't drink. Like in the beginning, it was like, oh, wait a minute, come on, enjoy, enjoy yourself. They're like, no, 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 he's different. Like, that's important to you, that's important to me, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's gotta be important for, uh, and listen, you gotta be that friend too, right? Like, you gotta be that friend that's willing to hold people accountable and um, say things that ain't popular, that ain't good at the time, and sometimes, your friends are gonna get pissed, but you know how that works. They'll get mad for a minute, and then they go look themselves in the mirror, and they'll be like, he wasn't lying. I mean, he was shooting me straight, and, and they'll thank you for it. Yeah, I think ha having the kind of friends that aren't just always gonna pat you on the back, but, but are gonna call you out and hold you accountable, and, and help, help us be who God has created and called us to be. So, um, I know we've got, got a lot to do on the program, but I wanna ask you guys, maybe just one more question for each of y'all to answer. We've got you know, close to 300 guys out here. I mean, if you could share anything with them, like this is your opportunity. Like if you want, if you could challenge these guys to do anything or, I don't know, what, what are y'all's thoughts? Um, at least for me, I think I could sum it up in two and three words, and that is get uncomfortable. That's two words. Three words. I've never been real good. At, I've never been real good at spelling either, David. The uh, get, okay. How about get uncomfortable now? Get outside your comfort zone. The next time you see somebody and they're sharing with you a, a story of life, how many of us have said, "I will pray for you," and how many of y'all then kind of forgotten, didn't pray? I'd encourage you to drop down with them right now, right then and pray with them right then, even if it's uncomfortable for you to do that. Share your love of the Lord and your faith with people at work and the people in your neighborhood. Um, and invite, pray for and invite people to conferences like this that you know that are, that are contrary. You've got to get uncomfortable. You've got to get out of that comfort zone. As important as it is what David was saying, you gotta be around people that are encouragers for you and that will inspire you, but we've also got to We've got to do things that we're not necessarily comfortable with. And you know, we have these, the, if, to the extent that your fears control you, your fears have more control over your dreams than you do. You've got to get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable now. <laughs> now. <laughs> I think along the, along the same lines, just be bold. Like, don't be afraid to get out there, be bold. Um, like, if you feel God calling you to do something, like, do it, take that leap. Uh, of faith, um, I think a lot of the time when someone's going through something, you got a buddy that's going through something, um, we'll be like, oh, well, I'll pray for you. It's like, no, like, and then you end up not doing it, or you go home, you might pray for him at home. It's like, no, like, stop what you're doing, pray for him right there on the spot. Um, so yeah. There's not very many stories anywhere where greatness has been easy or easily accomplished. Like, it, in, it requires intentionality. Like, if you really want your walk to be something special, you're gonna have to be intentional with your walk. And that's a challenge. How, are, are you reading? Are you getting in your Bible? Are you praying? I think a lot of us get very uncomfortable with prayer and we, have, we feel like we have to say the right things. Like, God doesn't care what you say. God just wants you to talk to him. It's a, it's a relationship, right? Like, but what are we putting into? Are we setting intentions for our day? Like, 
Are you intentionally living? Like, are you intentionally reading your scriptures to get better? How, how do you do that? Find people that will hold you accountable with that too. Find groups that will hold you accountable. I mean, me and Brad, Brad Williams right over there, we, we're doing a cool thing. We're going through the Bible and just doing character studies. We were going through Peter and John and different guys in the Bible and just sending something to each other every single day. Like just build on the knowledge of what we're going through every day. Just, you know, okay, hey, I learned this, I learned that. But if you don't make it intentional, life is so busy, it's so fast. And you know what we clamor? We clamor that because that's how we thrive. Every day we get up, we grind, we grind, we grind. Well, then a lot of times we get quiet, and what do we do? Turn the TV on, turn music on. We want more noise, we're used to noise. That's what drives us. We're so accustomed to chasing, 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 chasing. What are your intentional goals? How are you gonna grow spiritually? Like, what are you going to do to grow? Are you gonna spend time reading your Bible, reading books? Are you gonna spend time praying and doing a prayer journal? Like. If you want your prayer life to grow, Pastor Jay can, can get more in depth with you, but like, if you do a prayer journal, like I, I just started this. I'm not gonna act like I've been doing this for 20 years, but I just named my themes for Monday. Name my themes for Tuesday, like Thankful Tuesday. And I go down my list and I just write down every week what I'm thankful for. And those, I was, I was thankful for great friends on, on Tuesday and I prayed for all the people in my life that were great friends. Like, but, but again, None of this will happen by accident. All of this will happen if you're gonna be intentional and if you wanna grow. And it's not about being perfect every single day with it, but if you set intentions and you start working towards it, you'll crave it more and more. You'll want it more and more. You'll, your prayers will become something where it's like, this is not difficult anymore. I'm not struggling for words. It doesn't feel awkward like I'm talking to nobody. Like, you'll, you'll get more comfortable with being uncomfortable now. I mean, so. I think set intentions, be intentional with your life. Nothing is going to be easy, but when you write down those goals and you go chase them, they're tangible. They can be measured and, and take somebody along with you. Yeah, one of the things that I've been praying for, for for many years, and some of the elders can share that with y'all, but is, is for 100 men. And, I, and I've said this for years. If we had 100 men at Greystone Church who are on fire for God, like we could change the world. Like give me a hundred men who are serious about their walk with God, they're spending time with God every day, they're willing to go share their faith, they're willing to disciple other people. Give me a hundred men and we will, we will change the world for Christ. Well, I'm sitting here looking at 250, 300 men. Imagine 250, 300 men on fire for God. Walk with God, loving your wives, modeling for your kids. It, it excites me. I'm glad you're here. We're gonna move into a time of worship and then a good friend of mine's gonna, gonna bring a strong word for us. So uh, let's stand up together. Let me, let me pray for you. And uh, we'll move into some worship. God, I thank you for uh, each person that's in this room. I know that everybody is here for a reason uh, and a purpose. And I pray, God, that you would speak to each one of us, whatever that word is from you, whatever it is that you're calling us to do, whatever it is you're leading us to do, I pray that we wouldn't walk out of the church tonight with, with, without a clear word from you. God, I do pray that we would be obedient, that we would be faithful, that you would light a fire on all of these men that burn so broad, it leads to our, our wives, to our kids, to our families, to, to our neighborhoods, to our communities. God, we're praying for revival. We're praying for a great move of God. I pray that we would be the spiritual leaders that you have called us to be. And we pray it all in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this bonus episode of the Family Goals Podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Joe. It is so important to have solid foxhole friends that are going to comfort you in the valleys and celebrate with you on the mountaintops. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. So like Davey said, you are the average of the five friends you spend the most time with. So I encourage you to surround yourself with people that you want to emulate and to seek friends that will hold you accountable to the man or woman that God has called you to be. 
Thank you again for listening to the Family Goals Podcast, and we'll catch you Monday.